Three, two, one. Good morning, First Press, and everybody worshiping online. Pastor Bo here. Uh, I want to show you this place here around our church. It's a beautiful little grass area we have. In about two weeks, this will be all fenced up and is going to be filled with kids because Vacation Bible School is coming up. And you know we love Vacation Bible School here at First Press. And we're praying for kids to come and have a great time uh, learning about Jesus, learning about what it means to serve in the community and just have fun. It's been two years since have, we have done a in-person Vacation Bible School. So uh, pray for us. Also, you can help us by volunteering. Go to the uh, website and register uh, on the church website, firstpresjoliet.org and just pray we're gonna have a good time that's all now uh there's one uh one more announcement i i want to share with you and it has to do still with with children in the community and the summer lunch program and uh, that is a great project that we have where we can have you know from five to fifty kids here on uh, any given day uh coming to to get a lunch at church and it's more than just getting uh, a box lunch. It's actually about uh, getting uh, a time with, with people, playing a games, learning, uh, getting a book. It's, it's a good ministry time. So uh, again, a church is about serving people all around. So I want to encourage you to, to check our communication and see if you want to be involved in our summer ministry. I hope you have a great, great, great day. Thank you. See you guys.
friends, this is a sacred time. It is a time that is set aside so that we can focus our minds and our hearts on holy, holy God. So I invite you fully in to this time as we worship our holy God together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are with us, not just during worship, but each moment of our lives. We pray, Lord, that as we worship you today, that it will be pleasing to you, that you will enter into this time with us, and that when we leave this time of worship, that we will be stronger and better disciples, close, more closely following your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead and went up to heaven, he told everyone that loved him and followed him and believed in him to go to the synagogue 
their church and to pray, and God was going to send them a gift from on high. And they were excited, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they waited, and they waited, and all of a sudden, a wind came through the, through the, through the church. And everyone that believed in Jesus had fire shooting out of their heads. And then they started speaking in words and languages they had never studied. It would be like if we just started to talk in German or French or Spanish, stuff we didn't know. And those words were heard by other people that weren't believers of God, of Jesus. And they heard them talking about, in their own language, how wonderful God is and how much God does for all of us. And Peter, who was his, Jesus' right-hand guy, his, one of his best friends, Peter was so filled with fire and excitement over who Jesus is that he jumped up and said, Listen, all of you! Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the promised Messiah. He is the one that was sent down here from heaven to teach us how to live and connect with God and to love one another and be good people. Do you believe me? And at that moment, 3,000 people said, Yes, I believe you. Jesus is Lord. And Peter said, Do you claim him as your Lord? And they said, yes! And so they were baptized, and the Christian church was born. It was the beginning of who we are. It was the beginning of walking with Jesus. So I want you to join with me in wishing happy birthday to the Christian church, because we're part of it, the people are the Christian church, not the building. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that this gathering of people that you call church, the body of Christ, that we have been around for more than 2,000 years, we thank you that through us, your Holy Spirit changes our lives and changes the world. Help us to be filled with that fire that the early Christians were filled with. Help us to go forward and do great things. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Here at First Press, we feel that it is our mission to be involved in the community around us, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We want to, to be present with the people in our community so they can be fed, so they can be nourished spiritually, so they can come to know Jesus. And if they already know Jesus, so they can come to know him better and perhaps join in our work. We also feel called to help people on a national and worldwide level. And one of the things that we need in order to continue doing this are tithes and offerings. So at this time, I ask you to consider the gifts that you give to First Press. I want to assure you that they are being used so that we can be a strong presence for Christ in the world around us. There are many ways to give your offerings to First Press. If you're here in person, you can put your offering in the offering plate as it passes through the pews. You can mail in your offering, and there are ways to give electronically as well. And you can look at those ways online. Thank you, friends. We, together, are the hands and feet of Jesus to people around us. This is what we are called to do as his disciples, and we are doing our very best to follow that call. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gifts that are provided to your church here in Joliet. I pray that you would make us good stewards of those gifts, that they would be used as, as a ministry tool, that we can, can bring the gospel into the world around us, that we can be a place of help and hope. 
I thank you for this church body, for those who are members, for those who are friends, for those who have been here years and years, and for those who have just joined us. I pray, Lord, that our church body will continue to grow, and as the body grows, our ministries will grow. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we celebrate the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this amazing gift of power and strength. Help us to turn away from the parts of our psyche that would lead us to selfishness and pride. Keep us from hate and hurtfulness. Help us to walk away from anything that would make us less than who you call us to be. True disciples of Jesus Christ, givers of compassion and care for all who need you. And Lord, we all need you. In Jesus' holy name, we give you thanks and praise and pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Romans 8, verses 9 through 17. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are obligated not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we in fact suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning again. I am in the sanctuary uh, as I'm recording prayers of the people. And I want to share with you 
the quietness of this place. Now, if I am to step outside the church, the busyness of life is there. Cars passing by, people walking, and just the day, life as we know it passing by. But as you step into the sanctuary, there is a certain sense of quiet, a certain of peace. And that is what I, am, I want to invite you to today, to take advantage of this moment of prayer and thank God for the busyness of our lives and also come to God in prayer. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are thankful for the breath of life we have in us for the way that each day brings its own glory and as the day goes by we pray that we can understand and and see see those God's moments that you want us to to walk through even when we walk through the valley of shadow of death We know that life is not easy. We know that the busyness of life brings a lot of challenges to many, many people. And those challenges sometimes are pain, hurt, insecurity from a meal to housing to losing someone dear. There's a lot of pain in this world, Lord. And we pray for your healing. We pray for your comfort. And we pray for actionable plans, for ways that churches, people of faith, leaders of this country can come in and fill the gap between prayers and real help. So, Lord, we pray for the churches around us, for, for us as a church, that you will make us vital to our communities and help in a very, in a very practical way. We continue to pray, Lord, for the people that you put in our lives that we interact with daily or we run into them and we know them by name and uh, you put them in our hearts. We pray for them that they will know your grace and then we can be those hands of grace to them. We continue to pray for the peace of the world, for the peace of our communities, for our families. We continue to pray and, and, and say, turn the swords into plows. Let your peace tri triumph around us. And as always, Lord, we, we look to Jesus and we say, help us be like him as he walked through the world, helping and loving people. So let your love flow in us and through us in this day and all the days that will come till the moment we'll be with you in glory. We pray all this in his name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you and have a great week and take with you this moment of peace throughout the week. God bless you.
the Lord. Acts 2, 12 and 13. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. A priest of the temple speaks. You want to hear how it happened? I'll tell you. Every year we Jews gather together in the temple to celebrate Shabbat, the festival of the harvest. Jews come into the temple offering their first fruits and recommitting themselves to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, which impart the law. The temple was packed full of people that day, taking up space and taking up a big space, praying, always praying, are these followers of that dead prophet from Galilee. And no matter what you said to them, they wouldn't leave the temple. Jesus' followers said they needed to stay, needed to pray, until El Shaddai sent them some gift Jesus promised them. So here it is, Shavuot, and these disciples have nothing to offer. Where were their first fruits? Where was their commitment to the law? Then suddenly, out of nowhere, there is the sound of a rushing wind, like the kind that tears out of the desert and shakes the foundation of everything it touches. And Jesus' disciples start speaking in different languages, and some were speaking gibberish. So of course we thought they were drunk on new wine. But then, Jews who had traveled hundreds of miles to be here from other countries said they could hear these simple, uneducated folk from Galilee speaking in their own languages, languages Jesus' disciples could never have studied, praising God and their hair. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it myself. Their hair seemed to be on fire or there was some kind of fiery light above their heads. It was so bright. Some of my fellow priests tried to reason away what happened but even a blind man could see there was something miraculous, something mystical going on. Do you think it had something to do with the dead prophet? Do you think it had something to do with Jesus? You know, it's hard for us to imagine what it must have felt like to be there that day in the temple watching as the gift of God's Holy Spirit came upon his followers, witnessed by thousands of Jews who had not accepted Christ and the truth of his resurrection. Those Hebrews must have stood by amazed and more than a little afraid as those who followed Jesus were filled with power. And like everything God does, nothing is without a purpose. Nothing is by happenstance. God could have sent his Holy Spirit at any time, before or after the celebration of Shabbat, which is held 50 days after Passover. Passover, when an unspotted lamb's blood kept the angel of death from the Hebrew's door. So in gratitude, on Shabbat, Hebrews give God their first fruits and commit themselves to the law. Now, on that same day as our Pentecost, which in Greek is Pentecoste, and means 50, but this time it's not 50 days since the Passover, it's 50 days since Jesus, the final sacrificial lamb, died on the cross and rose from the dead, freeing all the world from eternal death. There is no doubt of the Creator's plan. The Lord meant to send his Holy Spirit 
to the temple on the festival of the harvest because God knew the Jews' hearts would be open to the message of Christ's sacrifice as the final Lamb of God. The Jews would be open to the end of the spilling of blood for the forgiveness of sin, an end to the law which no Jew, no human, however faithful, could fully keep. God knew the Jews gathered in the temple for Shavuot would be open to God's grace, God's loving, forgiving grace, which imparts the power of the Holy Spirit to change hearts and lives with a love that can achieve what no law ever could, a new way, a different way of knowing and connecting to God. That is when Peter, led by the Holy Spirit, jumps up and shows the Hebrews through scripture that Jesus is their promised Messiah. And 3,000 people believe and immediately accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, are baptized, and the Christian church is born. Can you imagine being one of the faithful in that day and age? Whether you knew Jesus personally or not, you were witness and participant in a power beyond our modern comprehension. A power that, made that was made possible because those disciples knew, they knew deep in their souls that Jesus is real. And by God's grace, the divine power he exhibited on the earth is now theirs. The kingdom of God is now here. And Jesus told them, it lies within them. Oh, the power the early Christian church exhibited. They were on fire for the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit, Nothing stopped them from doing the work of the kingdom. The early Christian believers healed the sick, made the lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, the mute talk. The followers of the way brought people back from the dead. So filled with the Holy Spirit were they that articles of their clothing could be brought to an ill person and they would be made well. They didn't doubt what God was doing in and through them. They just did it. And because of their faith, their lives were a witness to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and the church grew. Every day, the word tells us in Acts, the church grew. Jesus had promised them that with this gift from God, they could accomplish what he did and do even greater things. And they believed it. And they lived it. Talk about new wine. Jesus' first miracle was creating wine for a wedding. When Mary told her son they had run out, and insisted he fix it. Jesus listened to his mama and made wine. And Christ's new wine was so impressive, the steward asked the groom why he saved the best for last. Jesus uses wine for his holy supper to represent his sacrificial love. And Christ speaks of the mistake made when pouring new wine into old wineskins because old wineskins cannot withstand the expansion of the new wine as it ferments and grows. The old wineskins split and the new wine is lost. That is why the Holy Spirit was sent only to Jesus' followers that day. For an unbelieving Hebrew heart bound by the law would not could not handle the new wine of Christ. God dwells in a changed heart, a heart made new, a malleable, 
loving, trusting heart, open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. As Christ told Nicodemus, a Pharisee who was full of Jewish religiosity, only those born anew can inherit the kingdom of God. We modern Christians want to be born new in the Holy Spirit. We want to heal, change lives, and help people to realize how much God loves them. And if there was ever a time that needs Christians to be filled with divine power, it's now. So why don't we exhibit the same spirit as did the early Christian church? Why aren't we bringing converts into the faith with evangelical zeal? Why isn't our hair, why aren't our hearts on fire for the Lord? Have we become sad, old, dried out wineskins? Maybe too many years are between that first Pentecost and this one. Over 2,000 years have passed since that amazing fire-filled morning. The breath of God is still moving among us, but our hearts have grown skeptical and sad. We love the Lord, I know we do, but our hearts are not as malleable and trusting as those of the early Christian church. Too many of us doubt the Holy Spirit still dwells within our wineskins. But still we long for it. That divine power of love to change our lives and change the world. My friends, the Holy Spirit of God, that strength and that power are still open to us if we just believe and follow the teachings of Christ. If we love God and one another and ourselves. If we patiently pray and await the gift of the Holy Spirit's presence. If we open our hearts and our lives and our mouths to proclaim the good news of God's grace and goodness. Let's let the light of Christ shine so brightly People think our hair is on fire. And let that fire on our heads match the fire of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And then these old wineskins will be made new again. And we will dwell in and carry within us the kingdom of God. So now, I ask you, brothers and sisters in Christ, Who's up for some of that new wine? Alleluia. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together. Hey.
face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy. church celebrated communion every single night with one another. They had something called agape love feasts and it was the first potluck supper where people brought food from home and they all shared together. And then at the very end the culmination of the love feast was communion was remembering what Jesus had done for them and the power that he brought to them through the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. This table is laid out for you by Christ himself with elements that remind you of his body and his blood. Let us remember him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so grateful that when we take of these elements of faith, your presence is so strongly with us. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the connection we have with you and with one another. And we praise you and thank you as we take of your Holy Supper. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. On that night that Jesus was betrayed, he was sitting at supper with the disciples, with his friends, and he picked up a loaf of bread, just an ordinary loaf of bread, and he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body broken for you. My friends, the bread of life, take and eat. And in the same way, he took the fruit of the vine and he poured it into a cup, saying, This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus told them, Every time you eat this bread, every time you drink this cup, you proclaim my saving grace until I come again in glory. My friends, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Holy Lord, on this Sunday, when we celebrate the coming, the gift of your Holy Spirit, we ask that because of this bread and this cup, that your spirit dwells more firmly within our souls, that we become more and more like you, that we can listen and hear your voice, and that you lead us in the way that we should go. In Jesus' holy name we praise you. Amen. Amen.